Welcome back and for our next guest we have Kaveri Sequera, a certified health coach and author and she's here today talking to us about food marketing. So welcome Kaveri. Thank you Linda, it's great to be back. Food marketing Kaveri, what, what is the impact of food marketing? Thank you Linda, so we're actually subconsciously primed from a very young age when it comes to food. Um, for example, when, I, when you think about Christmas, uh, you think about, ch about Santa, you think about Santa, children associate you know, Santa with pleasure because it's presents. Um, now Santa's colors are red and white. Now, can you think of another fizzy drink company that also uses red and white in their marketing? Now, that is a level of priming that we are used to without being aware uh, from a very young age. I can give you another example. If you look at uh, how food is marketed to us, low fat, s you know, skim milk, um, no fat. That's, as soon as you go into the supermarket aisle, you, you look at these things and you think, okay, I'm trying to be more healthy. So maybe I should make one of these choices. It's right in front there. It's like really well advertised. It's colorful. But when you actually look at it, if you look at the back of the packaging, where the ingredients are for, for that particular item, you might actually find that there's so much of processed ingredients in that there's sugar in that which is hidden in different names. There's actually, are you aware that there's actually 65 names or more of sugar? Um, so sugar may not, so you might think you're making a really good choice by making a low fat or no fat, but that's being replaced by processed food uh, or worse with things like sugar and in, in its different names. So you might actually think you're making a healthy choice, but Actually, you're not. And the, in, that is one of the impacts of food marketing. So um, another example is when, uh, say, you go to a restaurant. Have you ever actually wondered why in the restaurant they give you free bread as soon as you walk in? What happens with free bread is that it's got a lot of junk sugars. And when you actually eat it, your body actually gets more hungry, not less. Have you wondered why you're never full after eating like three of those pieces of bread? The reason is we're not getting our nourishment from that food. It is not nourishing. It actually makes you more hungry. What happens when you're more hungry? You're going to order more. And that is all part of the subconscious priming that we, we're conditioned to from a very young age. So it's, 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 um, it's really important that we get uh, we're aware of it and we, we are educated on how to make better decisions and both with our money better. And so why... Why, uh, why is it important to know these food industry of tactics, food marketing tactics? As I said, it's really important that we educate ourselves uh, and, and, and be informed about the very fact that I've just a couple of things that I've just mentioned to you. Because if you don't, you're going to go ahead and make those decisions thinking you're making a healthy decision, a healthy choice. Uh, but actually, you're not doing anything positive for your health. Uh, in fact, you're actually, it's probably more detrimental because it's so much away from the natural diet. In fact, I can, I've got a great story. Um, I know a person who, in her, she's a woman in her 50s and she was so unhealthy and she was so unhappy in her life because uh, she's morbidly, she was morbidly overweight. Um, she had a lot of pain, arthritis. Uh, she wasn't even, she didn't have basic mobility that people have. Like she couldn't go up and down the stairs. So I have a great story. I have a woman in her 50s. Uh, I know a woman in her 50s and she was morbidly overweight and very unhappy. Had a lot of pain due to arthritis and just basically lacked basic mobility that, uh, you know, we, we would expect to have. Very unhappy with her quality of life, could, didn't have any energy, couldn't even go up and down her own stairs. And she um, learned a few of these food marketing tactics that I just shared with you and, you know, overall changed her diet to a more natural human diet. Um, and she uh, released about like over 30 kilos. And she has she's now got like, you know, a, like she's moved like a spring chicken and she basically has no pains, got rid of all her arthritis pains. And um, she's able to dance and do the things that she's passionate about. When I, when I look at her socials, I'm like so happy for her because she's just an overall happier, healthier person. And she can actually move up and down and do live her life. Um, now, that's what you want. And uh, that's how you, you know, and those are some of the benefits of, you know, being aware of this and changing your, your buying behavior, knowing what you know now.
So Kaveri, how can, how can we make better choices when we are shopping for food? Great. And for our, some tips for our viewers. Great. So um, the first thing that I would recommend in this topic is to get familiar with the ingredients on the item that you're buying. So I'm not talking about the nutritional information here, guys. I'm talking about the actual ingredients in, your, in the, the package that you're purchasing. Tomato ketchup is, is you would think, has tomatoes in it uh, and in a couple of other ingredients. But the second largest ingredient in tomato ketchup is sugar. Uh, and, you know, we all know that sugar is addictive and causes cravings. Uh, so if, if, if I were you, I would look at buying an organic version of that, which has no sugar or even make your own. Uh, so ingredients, look at the ingredients and make better choices. Uh, you could uh, get familiar with the 65 names of sugar. There's over 65 names of sugar. So you might actually think you're buying an item that has no sugar in it, but it just may not be called sugar in the ingredients list. It may not just, it may be called fructose or, or maltose or corn syrup. All of those are names of sugar. Uh, and it's important, it's, it, I would recommend that you get really familiar with that. Get familiar with, um, with the 65 names of sugar and always, always, always check your ingredients um, on, on, your, on the item that you're purchasing. The other thing you could do is limit things which have got refined sugar in it. So if you know that that particular um, item, so if you know the soft drinks or, um, you know, if you look at the ingredients of soft drinks, I mean, you'll find that just looking at, just doing that, you will be like shocked at what all things have got added sugar in it. Things that you don't think, for example, pasta sauce might have added sugar in it. So um, get familiar with the ingredients in everything you buy. Um, look, understand what those 65 names of sugar are. You could also make better choices if you want sugar. Uh, so you would do, I would recommend you have um, fruits, natural fruits in honey, uh, and you, you, know, you meet your sugar craving from those, uh, from those products. Uh, even grain, things like grain uh, has, have got a lot of junk sugars in it. So I would recommend reducing that as part of your diet as well, because that actually causes cravings as well. Um, so, and, and dairy, dairy also is something that I recommend that you, you limit. Well, thank you, Kaveri, for that. And for more information on Kaveri and food marketing, and also for that 65 names of sugar, then please go to her webpage on our website, healthwellbeingandlifestyle.com.au. And for now, we'll leave it till next week and be back with more amazing guests. Thank you.